Hi, I'm Jill Galloway. I'm an artist educator with the National Portrait Gallery and a full-time artist with JJ Galloway Studio. In today's Drawn to Figures lesson, we're talking about how to draw the standing figure. Now there's some really easy steps that you can follow in setting up every single one of your figures, and it starts with simple shapes. So that's where we're gonna begin. And then we're gonna quickly talk about some tips and tricks of things you can try within your figure drawing practice. There's also some traditional figure poses that we're gonna go over and look in our collection to see if we can find some. Okay, let's get started. For today's lesson, I'm going to use charcoal pencils because it's my favorite sketching medium. You can use whatever yours is, just as long as you can erase. You'll also need some plain sketching paper. The first step in drawing any figure is to draw the action line, which is the line that runs through the center of the figure. We are symmetrical. Even if we're bending or twisting, our bodies are still symmetrical. Next, you'll add an oval shape for the head, and then find the angles of the shoulders and the hips. The hips should be about halfway down the body. There's two triangles within the torso. One starts with the shoulders and ends in the pelvic bone area, and the other is inverted and starts at the hips, ending at the pit of the neck. There's a nice long line that runs from the neck, goes through the rib cage, and closes the top of the hip or the iliac crest, wraps around the great trochanter, which is the hip joint, and then flows down to the feet. Make a note in how the knees line up and draw nice long triangles for the thighs and sticks for the shin bones. You'll fill out the form with more specific details after you're sure your figure is set up correctly. There's several popular poses we see repeating in figure drawing. For example, this pose is called contrapposto or counterpose. The sitter, or subject, seems to be in mid-sway or mid-step. All of their weight is on one leg and the other leg is at rest. Ethel Merman is in a great contrapposto pose here. This is a portrait of George Washington called the Lansdowne Portrait. Washington's pose is called allocutio, which is basically contrapposto with your right arm raised, and in most cases the finger is pointing outward. This pose is used mostly with leaders in government or militaries and represents them giving a speech or some sort of directions. In art history, you see this pose repeated over and over. This pose is called pudica or modest pose. In art history, you see a lot of females in this pose in a sort of protective stance. The next examples of poses are a little more awkward, like this serpentine pose. A serpentine pose has the figure's entire body twisted, legs going in one direction and the upper body going in the opposite direction. This is Samuel Washington Woodhouse in the serpentine pose. The last pose is called a composite pose and started with the Egyptian figure, where the subject's shoulders are squared forward and the face and the hips face the side or in profile. William H. Johnson's figures look a lot like composite poses. You can try out all of these poses using sitters from our collection by going to our website at www.npg.edu and sorting through our exhibition collections. Thanks so much for joining me for today's Drawn to Figures lesson. I would love to see the artwork that you came up with. If you wouldn't mind posting your work on social media with the hashtag MyNPG, then we can all check it out. Thanks again and we'll see you next time.